After winning four of their last five contests, the Lopes return home, hoping to continue their dominance in whack play to kick off the 2020 calendar year. Alongside Cheyenne Rose, I'm Jack O'Hara, welcoming you inside the GCU Arena for women's basketball action between the Grand Canyon University Lopes and the Rio Grande Valley Vaqueros in the heart and soul of Phoenix, Arizona. And the Lopes will look to continue rolling on this Thursday night as they took care of business and quick manners, Cheyenne, on the road against Utah Valley in Seattle last week. And although we saw the end of Deja Daniels' impressive double-double streak, we saw a couple of the other Lopes offensive players break out offensively. Yeah, the Lopes freshman trio of Brian, Colin, and Raul did a large part of that offensive breakthrough, having 42 of those 66 points that the Lopes had in that victory over Utah Valley. And you mentioned that one name, May Bryan. She's been phenomenal for GCU coming out of the new year, added 14 more points to her total last Thursday in Seattle, and capped off her impressive month of January by being awarded the WAC Player of the Week on Monday. Mae Bryant has really helped lead the Lopes to those victories. She's shooting 60% from the field while averaging 15 points and eight rebounds off of the bench. She finished the Utah Valley game with her first career double-double and posted her season high in points and rebounds to help lead those Lopes to that whack victory. And it was Mae Bryant, Jada Holland, and Tavia Rao. Like you just mentioned, they did most of the damage with 42 of the Lopes, 66 points in their 56 to 48 victory in Seattle last Thursday night. You gotta give a lot of credit where credit's due to Ben Laveras as well, putting up 12 points of her own, going four for five from downtown. And then of course, it was Jada Holland leading the herd on Saturday, 15 points, six rebounds and nine assists and a 66-59 win in Orem, Utah against the Wolverines. And of course, the Lopes coming into this one, sitting a game above 500, nine and eight overall and four and two in whack play, while the Vaqueros are coming off a pair of losses against Utah Valley, 76 to 67, and a gut-wrenching 76 to 75 loss against the Aggies of New Mexico State. So they'll be looking to rebound in this one after that tough loss. Yeah, UTRGV is coming in with that chip on their shoulder, but the Lopes have been going so strong at this second half of conference play. It'll be a really interesting game to see how these two teams match up, being that this conference title is currently tied at six and six overall. And of course, it'll be Lan or Lane Lord, excuse me, manning the helm for UTRGV and the Vaqueros after just his second season of work, he was previously at Pittsburgh State University, a position he held from 2007 to 2018, has appeared in four NCAA tournaments, and of course will be looking to snap that two-game losing streak for the Vaqueros against the Lopes, who again currently have six wins this season on their home court here inside the GC Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. And we talk about the likes of Deja Daniel not having the most dominant road trip, but still getting the job done for the Lopes. Laura Pierre putting up 10 points as well against Utah Valley. And of course it was Jada Holland who did steal the show with her 15 points in Orem, Utah last week. As we get set for women's basketball action, we'll see if the Lopes are able to continue their hot streak to kick off the month of January, bleeding into the month of February. We'll be right back with women's basketball action right here on GCU TV. Across the bearded desert to where the mountains touch the sky. This is Sanderson Ford country where Arizona's pride. Sanderson Ford country built on serving you. Sanderson Ford satisfaction in everything. So one key component that makes the Waste Management Phoenix Open so successful is Cox Business. Over 700,000 people are gonna come enjoy TPC Scottsdale from digital TV to digital phones to security, and most importantly, that free Wi-Fi all over this property. We simply couldn't do it without a partner like Cox Business. We're grateful, we're thankful, it's a hole in one. Welcome back inside the GCU Arena in the heart and soul of Phoenix, Arizona as we get ready for women's basketball action between the Lopes and the Vaqueros. But before that, we'll send it down to public address announcer Paul Denuser for prayer, national anthem, and starting lineups. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome 
once again to the beautiful GCU Arena and tonight's Western Athletic Conference women's basketball matchup between the Vaqueros of University of Texas Rio Grande Valley and you, Grand Canyon University Antelopes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we ask that you all please rise if you are able. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Tanner Snyder, a GCU senior and Havocs leader, majoring in advertising and marketing. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this beautiful night that we were able to come together in fellowship and enjoy the wonderful sport of basketball. We ask that you put your hands of protection over the players tonight, helping them to have a game free of injury. May we glorify you tonight and every day. It's in your name we pray, amen. Thank you, Tanner. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the playing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by our very own Thundering Herd pep band under the direction of the professor, Dr. Paul Cook. Thank you. And now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's contest. First of all, for the Vaqueros of University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. At guard, a 5'9 junior, number zero, Zane Templeton. At guard, a 5'6 junior, number one, Amara Graham. At guard, a 5'8 junior, number five, Trey Lynn Tyler. At forward, a six foot grad student, number 23, Jordan Augustus. And at guard, a 5'10 freshman, number 24, Haley Jones. The Vaqueros are 8 and 11 on the season, 3 and 3 in Western Athletic Conference play. They're led by head coach Lane Lord, associate head coach Anna Nims, assistant coaches Epek Turklamaz and Blake Huber. And 
And just in case you missed the starting lineups, both for UTRGV and Grand Canyon, we'll say them one more time for you. For the Vaqueros, it's gonna be Zainai Templeton, Amara Graham, Traylon Tyler, Haley Jones, and Jordan Augustus to round out their starting order. For the Lopes, it's the usual suspects as Jada Holland starting things out as point guard. It'll be Laura Piera at shooting guard, Tavio Rowell as Carla Balagay and Deja Daniel will round out the Lopes order down front as the two forwards, bolt. each of the five Lopes starters playing in 17 games this season as of course the Lopes look to move to an even 10 wins this season. As they don the black uniforms tonight, UTRGV going with the bright orange and it looks like the Lopes are ready and the Vaqueros are ready. It looks like the Havocs are ready, Thunder's ready. Cheyenne, are you ready? I'm ready, are you ready, Jack? Let's do it here in Phoenix, and we are underway as it looks like the Lopes after a hard-fought tip-off there are gonna come away with the win. Jada Holland at the top of the key, one-on-one -on -one with Traylon Tyler. As that one gets away from her for just a second. Of course, Jada coming off that 15-point performance against Utah Valley. Laura Pierre with the ball, top of the key. Back to Holland, finds Balagay, back to Piera from downtown, give it to her! So right off the bat, Laura Piera puts the Lopes on the board. It's 3-0. Take another look here at the replay. Just making it look easy. Laura Piera one-on-one -on -one with Graham. As Templeton takes it the other way. Finds Jones. Jones going to take it herself. Gets blocked. It seemed like Carla Balagay did get a hand on it. Gets the roll anyway. Does Augustus for first two points of the night. It's a 3-2 score. Jada Hahn will take it back the other way for the Lopes. So right off the bat, both offenses coming away with two scores. Carla Balagay puts one up and off the glass, and the Lopes regain that three-point lead. It's 5-2. to two. So the Lopes offense starting off hot here as Carla Balagay, three-on-one coverage there as you take another look at the replay. Finding a way to put that one up against the glass as Traylon Tyler finds Augustus down low, one-on-one -on -one with Deja Daniel, goes with the reverse layup in and out. And the Lopes will look to take advantage here, already up by three, looking for an early offensive surge as it looks like that call is gonna be called against the Vaqueros and Templeton. So Zane Templeton picks up her first personal. Jada Holland with some separation against Templeton. Top of the key, Piera. Redirecting traffic early on in this one as Daniel sets the pick. Cross the body to Deja Daniel. Up, up and off the glass, and Deja Daniel's on the board for the first time tonight. So a 7-2 lead now for the Lopes as their offense connecting on all cylinders here in the first few minutes. And a quick score coming from UTRGV to make this a three-point game. And that'll go to Traylon Tyler with the layup. Lopes offense seems poised for the moment. The long distance three from Tavia Rowell doesn't go. As UTRGV now with an opportunity to climb back into this one early on in the first quarter. That one swiped away from Carla Balagain. The Lopes will take it the other way. Jada Holland thought about the fast break. Thinks better of it. Raul to Deja Daniel. Daniel gonna take it herself, does not get the call as UTRGV takes it the other way. One on one with Piera is Graham. Doesn't find the net, the Lopes will once again take it the other way. Raul finds Holland from downtown. Won't get the roll there as it's rebounded by Templeton and once again the Vaqueros with an opportunity to climb back in this one. And the foul will go against the Lopes for their first of the night. And it looks like Templeton will shoot two from the line. So early on in this game, Cheyenne, both offenses really going mano a mano, matching their defenses to this point with really two offensive surges to start this one out. Yeah, both offenses have started going strong already, being really aggressive so far. And we'll see if this Lopes defense can step up against Templeton who finds some room against Rowell and nothing but net there for Zane Templeton. She's on the board for the first time tonight. It's a one 
possession game now. One point lead for the Lopes. Top of the key is Kennedy Shorts. Finds May Bryant. We mentioned May Bryant named Matt Wack player of the week back on Monday. Puts that one up, nothing but net. She's got her first two points of the night and it's nine to six. So it'd be nice to see both May Bryant and Deja Daniel getting rolling early on in this one against a very good Vaqueros team coming off a one point heartbreaking loss in overtime against the New Mexico State Aggies and Aggies team that comes in here on Saturday for a big matchup here in Phoenix against the Lopes as once again it looks like Traylon Tyler finding some separation doesn't get the roll right there for the rebound is May Bryant taking it the other way Jada Holland gonna slow things down redirect traffic once again for the black and purple Piera one on one with Tyler going for the layup there was Kennedy Shorts doesn't find it right there for the rebound is Jada Holland Holland will once again set things up at the top of the key with about six seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Looking for some separation, finds Pierre. Pierre thought about going from downtown with one second left, puts it up. Didn't get a great shot off, but May Bryant right there for the rebound and she'll get the foul and she'll shoot two from the line. So May Bryant making an impact right away in this one after checking in moments ago. Already with two points and two rebounds on the night. Looking for two more right here. Yeah, as we mentioned, Mae Bryant's been playing great coming off of that win in Utah Valley. She recorded her first career double-double, and I'm sure she's going to try and get her second one here tonight. I mentioned 14 points against Seattle, 16 points against Utah Valley. As she sinks the first one to give the Lopes a four-point lead and a two-possession lead. And in that 16-point performance against Utah Valley, came away with 10 rebounds as well. So she sinks both free throw attempts, now has four points to go along with those two rebounds, giving the Lopes a five possession, or a five point lead, excuse me. And Zane Templeton will once again look to get UTRGV right back in this one. One on one with Jada Holland. Finds Traylon Tyler. Tyler looking for some separation. Pulls up, unable to hit that shot as that one's going to be rebounded by Jada Holland. Looking for that fast break the other way. Slows things down once again. Once again, great thinking there from Jada Holland as she finds a hole, looks for the pass across the middle, finds Tavia Rowell who puts it up. Rebounded by Kennedy Shorts, doesn't get the roll. And that one's gonna be rebounded by, it looks like, Megan Johnson entering this one. Going the other way with it is Graham. Amara Graham coming off a 21 point performance against New Mexico State as that is gonna go against UTRGV and we have a timeout on the floor. It's an 11 to six lead for GCU and we'll see how the Lopes are able to contend against this UTRGV defense going on in the next three and a half quarters with our Sanderson Ford, three keys to the game. So the first key of the game is to win the battle. The Lopes and the Vaqueros have a tied all game record at six and six. So the Lopes have to take control of this fire under them and take the lead of the series for this meeting. The second key is here comes the herd. As we mentioned previously, all of the Lopes have been stepping up and making with their wins like a true team victory for this Lopes team. Um, the third key is Waction the sequel. We head into the second half of Wack play. The Lopes are currently sitting in second and they're tied with Kansas City and CSU Bakersfield. So as we head into the second half of the Wack play, it'll be really interesting to see how this team keeps going. Will be interesting. You said the second half of whack play, and you mentioned the Lopes and the Vaquero, six and six lifetime. Something's got to give in this one between these two squads as UTRGV looks to climb back in this one. And early on, it's been all about the Lopes offense. Laura Pierre again, things started with that three pointer from downtown right off the bat, right out of the get go. And then, of course, May Bryant, we mentioned 30 points on that road trip against Seattle and Utah Valley, already with four points and two rebounds tonight. Really proven why she was named WAC Player of the Week on Monday. And UTRGV, of course, being led so far in this one by Zane Templeton with her two points and two rebounds. And Haley Jones getting them on the board early on, but this was the first timeout called by head coach Lane Lord. This it looks like May Bryan will inbound this one for the Lopes. Yeah, this game really has been a very offensive battle so far between both teams, both teams going at it, super strong right out of the gate. 
So it'll be interesting to see these offenses, how they stay, and how they bring their defense into this game. We'll see what that first media timeout does to these offenses. It isn't going to slow the lopes down early on. Jada Holland gets on the board. Perfectly executed by that offense as you take another look here. Beautiful pass there, allowing Jada Holland to hit that one off the glass. So we'll see how UTRGV responds. As that one's going to be put up, and the foul is going to be called, it looks like, against Tavia Rowell. And the Vaqueros will shoot from the line. So we'll see if they can climb back in this one. Chip away with these two shots coming from Ashley Lopez. Ashley scoring six points with three rebounds in that overtime loss last weekend against the Aggies. Doesn't get the roll there. So UTRGV 0 for 1 from the line so far as Laura Piera checks back in for the Lopes. And Lopez goes one for two from the line. And that's their first point in the last two minutes and 40 seconds. So UTRGV looking to get rolling now as Jada Holland gonna take it up the court for the Lopes. Kennedy Shorts, top of the key, finds May Bryant. Bryant, two on one coverage from UTRGV. And she's gonna get called with the charge, her first personal, and UTRGV will take it the other way. About four minutes left in quarter number one. It's a six point lead for the Lopes, 13 to seven. Offense seems to be clicking on all cylinders so far in this one. Haley Jones looking to get the Vaqueros rolling. Bershers in this one to Borgie. Pass deflected by May Bryant, looking to get a hand on it, but the Vaqueros able to stay in possession. It'll be Tapia at the top of the key, one-on-one -on -one with Holland, looking for some space. About 10 seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Haley Jones looking for some separation. Finds Bergie once again, and Bergie's gonna get the roll. And just like that, it's a 3-0 scoring run for UTRGV, and they're right back in this game, down by four, 13 to nine. So Ben Laveris also checking into this game with Laura Piera. Dishes that one back to Jada Holland, back to Varis. Finds May Bryant at the top of the key, back to Piera in the corner, looking for some separation once again. Finding Jada Holland, but the foul is called against the Vaqueros. It looks like Megan Johnson called with the foul. And it looks like we'll see an entirely new set for Coach Lord and UTRGV. So it looks like Tapia, Borgie, Jones, Bershers, and Tyler will all check out as Zane Templeton, Amara Graham, and Jordan Augustus all check back in for the orange as Laura Piera finding shorts. Back to Varis. Piera once again looking for some separation and almost coming away with the perfectly executed play there. That ball goes in and out of the bucket. Traylon Tyler taking it the other way, looking for some separation in the paint, slashing and dashing off the glass. And just like that, it's a two-point game here in Phoenix. So UTRGV really slumping early on before that media timeout, but currently find themselves on a 5-0 scoring run to get themselves back in this game after trailing by as many as seven moments ago. Bryant looking for some separation and it looks like she's gonna get called with her second charge in a matter of moments. And May Bryant trying to be aggressive on the floor early on with those four points. Finds herself with two personal fouls right off the bat here in quarter number one as Laura Piero will once again check out for the moment for Coach Powell. This Lopes defense is, and offense for that matter, they're all the way around playing really aggressive, but as you mentioned, May Bryan getting those two fouls within the matter of a few minutes apart. And Augustus blocked there by May Bryan as she'll pick up the scraps for the Lopes defensively. Tiana Brown taking things the other way. Once again, looking to set something up here on offense, trying to break that 5-0 scoring run. Ferris, one-on-one, -on -one, gets the pick from May Bryant. Jada Holland with about 13 seconds left to shoot. It's gonna re-strategize here at the top of the key. Pick set by Kennedy Shorts in the paint. Jada Holland looking for some space. May Bryant will find it. it's not gonna get the roll. 
as that one hits off the back of the rim and UTRGV with a chance to complete the comeback here, looking to go on a 7-0 scoring run. Thompson, or Templeton, excuse me, finds the net and we're all knotted up at 13. Brown setting things up here for the Lopes. Ben Laveras, who mentioned those 12 points against Seattle on Thursday night. Jada Holland from long distance, not gonna find the net. Right there once again is Mae Bryant with her third rebound and she finds the glass in the net to give the Lopes the lead right back. It's 15 to 13 and Mae Bryant with six quick points here in quarter number one. Templeton finding some space. Nothing but net once again to nod this one up at 15. So it looks like we're gonna have ourselves a ball game, ladies and gentlemen, between the Vaqueros and the Lopes. Here early on, Ven Laveras shuffles that one off to Tiana Brown, who finds Jada Holland looking for some space, finds May Bryant, finds Kennedy Shorts, who's gonna put it up, doesn't get the foul there, gets her own rebound, and she gets fouled on the second try, and she'll shoot two from the line. Foul gonna go against Graham there. That'll be her first personal, and the Lopes will look to regain the lead with about 22 seconds left here in quarter number one. Kennedy Shorts goes 0 for 2 from the line. As UTRGV now with a chance to complete this comeback, looking to take their first lead of the night. That one deflected, but right back in the arms of Trey Lynn Tyler. Back at the top of the key is Templeton. Templeton looking to be the hot hand right now for the Vaqueros. That one goes in and out. Rebounded by Tiana Brown, and that'll wrap up quarter number one. So the Lopes and the Vaqueros both doing a tremendous job offensively. The Lopes to start this one once led by as many as seven points with May Bryant leading the charge with six points and three rebounds. But UTRGV with a 7-0 scoring run late to nod this one up. We're all knotted up at 15 apiece going in to quarter number two. But Cheyenne, what did you like in this uh, first quarter between the Lopes and the Vaqueros? We saw May Bryant, of course, the six points. Laura Pierre getting hot right off the bat with the, that three-pointer from downtown. And of course, you can't forget about Zane Templeton with six points of her own, three from six from the field for the Vaqueros. Yeah, both teams came out really hot on offense, really aggressive overall. But I think after that first media timeout and that first set of points by Jada Holland, the Lopes team to slow down and took that as needing to be more aggressive. And while being aggressive is great if you can be aggressive smartly, but we saw Deja Daniels get, or excuse me, we saw May Bryant get two charges within a couple of minutes apart, giving her two fouls really early in this game. So I think both teams have been playing great, but they need to play aggressively smartly. And those two charges early on from May Bryant, you're gonna wanna limit those considering how well she's played over the past number of games. We'll see what the Lopes are able to do in quarter number two as we are all knotted up at 15 between UTRGV and GCU. You're watching GCU women's basketball here on GCU TV as we get ready for the second quarter. It looks like the Lopes are gonna go with Jada Holland. Jada Moss, Tiana Brown, May Bryan, and then of course, down at the bottom, Deja Daniel. Go one on one with Desiree Berge here to start out quarter number two, and the quick three point shot from Berge. Not gonna find the net there, as she'll hear it from the Havocs faithful as Tiana Brown takes it the other way. Those Havocs always make it a lot harder for those visiting teams here. Well, we mentioned it in that Chicago State game just a number of weeks ago. A big win for the Lopes offensively. And of course, the Havocs giving the Cougars a tough time in that one here in Phoenix. We expect to see the same tonight against Grand Rio Valley, especially if the Lopes are able to catch some momentum here in the next few moments, as that one's gonna be rebounded by Deja Daniel. Quickly stripped by Templeton, looking to take it the other way, going for the quick score. 
It looks like Traylon Tyler gonna re-enter this one for UTRGV. Templeton will take a seat for the moment for Coach Lord. As it's inbounded by Bryant, Jada Holland being defended by Templeton, giving her a tough time as that one's gonna be called against Zane Templeton. So Traylon Tyler takes the seat. Templeton re-enters this game, excuse me, from moments ago. As Carla Balagay will now check in for Deja Daniel. But a quick personal from Templeton. That's her second of the night. Really playing tremendous defense to start this one out for the orange and white of the Vaqueros. That one's quickly blocked by Berge, but out of play. And the Lopes will once again inbound. It looks like it'll be Tiana Brown. And Jada Holland will once again look to redirect traffic early on in this one, trying to give the Lopes their third lead of the game. Remember the Lopes led by as much as seven, 13 to seven in the first quarter. They regained the lead 15 to 13 after the UTRGV 7-0 scoring run capped off by Zane Templeton. As it looks like this one's gonna be called against UTRGV as well. It looks like it'll be Amara Graham with her first personal. And the Lopes once again inbounded underneath the basket. It looks like Jada Holland. Looking for a man, finds May Bryant. Back to Holland, thought about taking a shot there from the arc. Ops to reset in the paint from downtown. Kiana Brown took a shot, but in and out once again. The Lopes really finding their stride early on in that first quarter, really struggling at the moment. As Graham once again looking to take it herself here in the paint, finds a wide open Tapia in the corner. Tapia hands that one off. To Templeton, Templeton once again taking it herself and gets nothing but net there and it looks like they'll try to convert the three point play after the foul from Tiana Brown. And that's gonna be number one, Amara Graham with a three point play. So she gets nothing but net with that shot. She now has four points on the game to go with one rebound. And she'll look to put UTRGV ahead by at least three as they take their first lead of this game as she converts the three-point play, and May Bryan will inbound it once again to Jada Holland, trying to get the Lopes back in this game. So the complete comeback from the Vaqueros after being down by as many as seven early on, as Jada Holland finding some room, taking it to the house, doesn't get the roll right there as Carla Balagay for the rebound. But that one's gonna be stripped by Valeria Tapia. As Laura Piero once again Take another stab here. She'll enter this game for Jada Holland. Even with the Vaqueros getting that lead finally, they're still playing super aggressively. They switched over to man coverage and they're really playing really great defense against the Slopes offense right now. Which is something we didn't see in the first few moments of that first quarter. We're really stepping up like you mentioned, Cheyenne. We almost see it right there again with Tapia trying to get the steal from May Bryant, who once again, the hot hand for the Lopes in this one so far. Eight points already to go with those three rebounds as you take another look here. Two on one coverage gets the roll. Right here is Tapia once again finding some space, doesn't get the lay in as it's rebounded by Berge and she'll get fouled in the paint. Another substitution here for the Lopes. Tavia Rowell enters this one for Tiana Brown. We mentioned Tavia Rowell heating things up on that road trip with 12 points against Utah Valley. The quick three from Templeton's not gonna go. It's gonna go out of play and the Lopes will regain possession. And once again, Zane Templeton will hear it from the Havocs. That shot just a little bit off target as Laura Piero will once again take things the other way for the Lopes, who once again slowly chipping away down by one, look to regain their lead for the fourth time in this one. Balagay back to Piera. Piera two on one coverage, finds Jada Moss, and that one's gonna be last touched by the Lopes. So UTRGV will once again take it the other way, looking to regain that three point advantage. 
Mara Graham taking things up for UTRGV. Templeton finds Bergie down low in the paint. Finds Tapia, Tapia in the paint, looking to find some separation, doesn't it? She won't find the net there, rebounded by Tavia Rowell. And UTRGV will stay in possession there as the foul's gonna go against the Lopes. And Tapia will look to inbound it underneath the basket. Inbounded to Graham, back to Tapia. One on one with Tavia Rowell. Looking for some separation once again as she finds Bergie in the corner. One on one with Mae Bryant. Puts it off the glass. Doesn't get the roll. Rebounded by Balagay, but out of bounds. And it looks like it was last touched by Bergie. And the Lopes will regain possession as Mae Bryant will inbound it. So a back and forth seesaw affair between UTRGV and GCU in this one after a red hot start from this Lopes offense, which started out with that three point shot from Laura Piera. Lopes led again by as many as seven. They led seven to two early on before UTRGV was able to mount that comeback and complete it by taking a three point lead in this quarter as they will once again take that one away. Stripped by Megan Johnson. Megan Johnson with a limited amount of minutes so far in this one, coming off a 13 point game against New Mexico State as that's gonna be a travel against Tapia. And the Lopes will once again get an opportunity to at least take a one possession lead with Deja Daniel re-entering this one for Coach Powell. May Bryant, again, red hot so far in this one with those eight points, will take a seat for the moment as Laura Piero awaits the inbound pass from Balagay. So once again, Lopes look to combat this UTRGV defense. Like you mentioned, Cheyenne has really stepped up in a huge way here in quarter number two, at least for the first four minutes. Is that one once again gonna be stripped from Laura Piero by Megan Johnson, and Tapia is gonna take it the other way. Tapia one-on-one -on -one with Rowell. Dishes it to Graham. Graham one-on-one -on -one with Piera in the paint. Finds an open Tapia. From beyond the arc, decides to go inside. Off the glass and no good, rebounded by Tapia. And back to the top of the key is Amara Graham. So with about seven seconds to shoot, Amara finds some space off the glass. Wow, very impressive shot from Amara Graham. She now has five points and UTRGV regains that three possession lead. It's 20 to seven. Boy, I'll tell you, Cheyenne, that one did not look great yeah. from this view, but Graham, some way, somehow, is able to find the glass off the backboard. The bank is surely open on this Thursday night for Amara Graham. Yeah, that was an absolutely amazing shot, especially from the angle and being well covered by the Lopes defense. I'm not even sure if Amara Graham thought that one was going in. Yeah. Nonetheless, UTRGV up by three once again as that one is going to be a travel on the Lopes, and UTRGV continues to try and take advantage of some of these Lopes offensive mistakes early on in this second quarter. No points in the last three minutes for the Lopes as Tavia Rowell's gonna take a seat. Jada Moss re-enters for Coach Powell as Tapia takes it up the court once again. UTRGV's largest lead of the night so far has been three as Laura Piera looking for the steal, almost found it there. He's got a regroup here against Megan Johnson, who's gonna get fouled and she'll shoot two from the line, but very aggressive defense, which is something you wanna see from Laura Piera in this game as the Lopes are gonna take a timeout. First timeout of the quarter as the Lopes offense looking to rebound in a big way. It's UTRGV 20, GCU 17. You're watching GCU women's basketball action right here on GCU TV. It takes great determination to lead a Division I team. Some of us, it just comes naturally. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. 
Our military heroes' courage and bravery give greater meaning to what it is to be an American. Grand Canyon University honors our heroes and pays tribute to your heroism. Thank you for your service. Back inside the GCU Arena for the remainder of quarter number two. We got about four minutes and 56 seconds remaining here in quarter number two in the first half between UTRGV and Grand Canyon University. It's a three point lead for the Vaqueros as this Lopes offense seems to be lost at the moment. No points in their last three minutes and two seconds, Cheyenne, as we saw May Bryant with a quick eight points early on in this one. Currently on the bench for Coach Powell as the Lopes offense just looking to get things going against the UTRGV offense that has been surging here in quarter number two. Yeah, one, I feel like once the Vaqueros switch to a man-on-man -man coverage, it really has stopped the Lopes in that offensive run that the, we're having at the start of the game. And of course, a great adjustment by Coach Lane Lord there. You credit that to him after that first media timeout in quarter number one. It seems that this UTRGV defense has been a completely different team since that timeout. As Megan Johnson finally on the board in this one. We mentioned Megan Johnson so far, a limited amount of minutes so far here tonight, looking to get rolling for the Vaqueros. Now has two points after those two free throw attempts, and it's a five point lead, the largest lead of the night for UTRGV as the Lopes look to get back in this one. Deja Daniel looking to get rocking and rolling off the glass for two. Deja Daniel now has four points, and as we've seen all season long, Cheyenne, if you get Deja Daniel going, there may be no turning back here for the Lopes against this Vaquero offense, despite how well the defense has been playing. As Cajero enters this one, finds an open Megan Johnson looking to take it to the house once again. And here's that breakaway that we mentioned that the Lopes needed. Jada Moss not getting the foul there against Johnson from downtown is Ben Laveris, nothing but net. So to, despite not getting the call there, the Lopes with a blessing in disguise. Ben Laveris, who mentioned four for five from downtown on that road trip. And so far, one for one from downtown here tonight with that three-point shot to nod this one up at 22 apiece. Yep. So we mentioned that Lopes <laughs> offense trying to get going in this game just like that in a matter of moments with a 5-0 scoring run to nod it up. Yeah, Varys actually leads the WAC in three-point accuracy. So even though that foul wasn't called, giving her the ball on that shot was a great play. And that... For Layup attempt, excuse me, by Tapia. No good, and the Lopes will once again feed Deja Daniel, who's gonna go to the line. Doesn't get the roll, but she'll get the two-point play here, trying to give the Lopes the lead back again, looking for their fourth lead of the night. As Daniel will shoot two from the line. We'll see three new substitutions for UTRGV, as it looks like Megan Johnson and Valeria Tapia will both take a seat for the moment. Daniel doesn't get the roll there, so the Lopes will look to take at least a one-point advantage on this next free throw attempt from Daniel. It looks like Amara Graham re-enters this one for UTRGV. We mentioned that impressive three-point shot moments ago. As the Lopes take a one-possession lead, their fourth lead of the night, as Deja Daniel now has herself five points on the board. So Graham will take this one up for UTRGV. I mentioned how impressive their defense has been in this second quarter. Lopes looking to match that right here, right now after that impressive 5-0 scoring run. Now a 6-0 scoring run off that last free throw attempt from Daniel. As the Vaqueros just throwing that one up. Looking like a completely different offense after this Lopes recent surge in the last two minutes. As Jada Holland finds Balagay. Feeds Deja Daniel once again. It's been the recipe for disaster for opponents all season long as the Lopes look to get that rolling like I mentioned before. And Daniel will once again shoot two from the line looking to give the Lopes a three-point advantage. Yeah, Daniels enters this week with nine double-doubles, which is ranking 24th in the nation. So giving her the ball and feeding her is a great idea for the Lopes. However, other teams may want to stop that action from happening. And the Wolverines did a good job of that this past weekend in 28 minutes. Deja Daniel with 12 points. Or excuse me, with six points, 12 rebounds. 
but they were able to stop the scoring hazard that is Deja Daniel. Weren't quite up to speed with the rebounds as Deja Daniel seems to get over at least 10 rebounds in each of her outings so far this season. As Templeton finding some space, Templeton throws it up once again as the Vaqueros continue to not get great shot offs so far in this second quarter. That one goes in for Johnson. And it's a one point game once again. Jada Holland takes it the other way for the Lopes. You mentioned Daniel and her rebounds. Yeah, she averages 10.2 rebounds per game, which actually leads the WAC and also ranks her 25th nationally for her rebound percentage. It's not too shabby, yeah. I gotta say. Use a few more here tonight defensively as the Lopes, again, only lead this one by one as we'll see another offensive foul. As May Bryant will once again enter this one for the Lopes as it looks like we'll have Deja Daniel and May Bryant on the court at the same time for the first time in this one. Again, the two hot hands for the Lopes right now. Considering Deja Daniel has herself seven points so far. May Bryant, we mentioned the eight points early on. A phenomenal pass there from Berge. Unable to find the net though is Graham who finds Lopez. Lopez looking to take this one to the net and she'll shoot two from the line after the foul from Jada Moss. So UTRGV doing a good job at getting fouled in the paint so far here in the final moments of quarter number two. Trying to at least nod the score up at 25 apiece. They've only had one lead in this game. They led by as many as five before the Lopes quickly evaporated that lead in about 25 seconds with that 5-0 scoring run moments ago capped off by the three point shot from Ben Laveris. UTRGV looking to take the lead right here, right now, as Lopez unable to sink that second free throw attempt. May Bryant picks up another rebound, quickly stolen away by Berge. And once again, it's stolen away by May Bryant. So about a minute and a half remaining here in the first half. The Lopes looking to go into quarter number three with a lead. Jada Holland looking for some separation. May Bryant to Moss. Moss with about eight seconds to shoot, puts it up and gets fouled. Looks like the foul will go against Berkey, her first personal and the Lopes will once again take a little something from UTRGV's playbook. Getting fouled in the paint and the Lopes will shoot two. Jada Moss only playing four minutes in that win Last Saturday in Utah Valley. Got herself one point and one rebound as she looks to find one point here on this play to give the Lopes at least a 26-25 advantage. I mentioned UTRGV looking to pick up their first win in about two weeks. Again, coming off that two game road, or that two game homestand, excuse me, going 0-2. Laura Piero once again entering this one for the Lopes as she checks in. Haley Jones checks back in for UTRGV as Graham will take it to the top of the key with about a minute 10 remaining here in the second quarter. Wide open is Jones. Doesn't take the shot there as Ven Laveris able to catch up to her. From downtown is Megan Johnson and that one's gonna float right in and UTRGV regains the lead. It's 28-26, their second lead of the night. They're now three for five from downtown as Laura Piera shuffles out one to Jada Holland. 48 seconds remaining. Lopes looking to nod this one up at 28. Ben Laveris has other plans from downtown. Doesn't get the roll. Trying to give the Lopes a 29-28 lead. Lopes are going to get fouled underneath the board. And UTRGV with possession of the ball with about 41.7 seconds remaining. So will once again be Megan Johnson, already one for two from the line tonight with those four points in this game as she misses the first free throw attempt. She's already played in nine minutes in this one. Is one for three from the field.
Misses both free throw attempts. Rebounded by Haley Jones. Puts it off the glass once again, and she's going to get fouled and go to the line. Foul looks like it's going to go against Deja Daniel. Unhappy with herself after that play. And UTRGV once again, like I mentioned, Cheyenne doing a very persistent job so far here in these final moments of quarter number two. Getting fouled in the paint. Yeah, they're still playing super aggressively. Getting those rebounds and then with the Lopes also playing very aggressively. It's gonna end up with a lot of fouls as both teams are now in bonus for at least the next 39 seconds. Hopefully the Lopes can get this rebound if it doesn't go in and the Havocs are hoping that and being very loud as well. Well that one silences the yeah. Havocs right there as UTRGV able to go one for two from the line. You mentioned the fouls, 13 fouls total between both squads in this one as Coach Powell wants to have a word with her starting five at the moment. 39 seconds remaining. It's a UTRGV 30 to 26 lead. You're watching GCU women's basketball right here on GCU TV. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Coming in hot here on GCU TV as Jada Holland dishes that one to Piero with about 27 seconds left. Holland looking for some separation once again. Piera in the paint, finds a wide open Holland from downtown, doesn't get the roll, rebounded by Amara Graham looking to take it the other way. And with about 10 seconds remaining, it looks like she's gonna take the final shot. So UTRGV's offense slipping a little bit halfway through this quarter, but looking to end things with a bang. Going up with it is Johnson, and that'll be the final point of the first half. So UTRGV, like I said moments ago, finishing strong with a 7-0 scoring run in the last minute to take a six point lead going into the second half. Yeah. UTRGV's defense was very aggressive, playing really hard down in the paint, getting those fouls and getting those free throws, which really has helped them not only tie the game and then get their lead back multiple times against this Lopes offense. Now we mentioned that Lopes offense really starting out in this game pretty hot in the first quarter. Laura Pierre getting things going with that three point shot from beyond the arc at the top of the key. And then of course, Deja Daniel with those seven points. May Bryant with eight points as well. Four rebounds to go with those eight points. So we'll see if the Lopes offense is able to click once again as they have a comeback on their hands in quarter number three. They trail this one 32 to 26, trying to move to 10 wins overall on the season. And here, of course, you're watching GCU women's basketball action right here on GCU TV. Use the latest technology to treat patients. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Of service to one's community. Of excellence in academic achievement. Change the way we search, watch, read, and buy virtually everything. It has changed how we communicate with each other and the modern tools we use today. The technology evolution of the last 10 years has produced more innovation and change than the previous 100 years combined. While technology companies are the innovators and disruptors in the 21st century, higher education is viewed quite differently. This is where the story of GCU begins. With unsettling market pressures and potential closure, GCU's historic legacy as a small Christian university in 2008 needed transformation. In 10 short years, GCU's innovative business model for higher education defied conventional wisdom with amazing success, providing opportunity for people of all socioeconomic backgrounds all over the world. GCU has since become home to roughly 90,000 ground traditional and online students, graduating nearly 25,000 students in 2018. 
These graduates earn their degrees in next generation programs that prepare them to be workforce ready. But growing the student body wasn't the only mission. Providing affordable, quality education with a Christian worldview was paramount, leading to an increase in graduation rates across all students. The average GPA of incoming ground traditional students grew from 2.7 to 3.5, and the GPA of ground traditional honors college students increased to an average GPA of 4.1 as the university built new colleges, moving from three colleges to nine. At GCU, these GPA benchmarks rose as national GPA averages remain roughly 3.0, all while keeping 4.1 as the university built new colleges, moving from three colleges to nine. At GCU, these GPA benchmarks rose as national GPA averages remain roughly 3.0, all while keeping ground traditional tuition the same for the past 10 years and providing students with degrees designed for the 21st century. Along with building a first-class academic reputation, GCU has become a leader in the community. Investing in West Phoenix reflects how GCU stood behind its commitment to faith and service. This story is told in one simple yet powerful phrase. Find your purpose. Came through dripping, dripping. Came through dripping, dripping. Came through dripping, dripping. Tell me some of my best day dripping. Ice. Came through dripping, dripping. Came through dripping. Mountain Dew Ice, a clear, refreshing lemon lime dew. Time. Never enough hours in the day, not enough days in the week. But you always make time for work, for play, for creating a brighter future. GCU's Colangelo College of Business puts you first so you can earn your MBA degree online on your time. To advance your career in business, it takes support from those around you. There's never been a better time to become tomorrow's leader than now. Find your purpose at GCU. Visit gcu.edu slash MBA. Welcome back inside the GCU Arena as it is halftime here in Phoenix, Arizona. UTRGV with a 32-26 advantage over GCU. And we talked about the lack of offense in that second quarter, Cheyenne. It really looked like it was going to get going after that quick 5-0 scoring run capped off by Ben Laveris' three-point shot to nod this one up at 25. They took a 26-25 lead, but since then a 7-0 scoring run for UTRGV as they look to come into Phoenix and steal one from the Lopes. Yeah, as we mentioned, this series is tied at six and six. So both teams really want this win. UTRGV is coming off of that heartbreaking overtime loss by one. So they have that chip on their shoulder as well. Both teams played absolutely outstanding so far. UTRGV's defense has just really come in and stopped that Lopes offensive momentum that they had going in that first half. While well, the Lopes looking to once again regain that momentum in quarter number three as we get ready for a very, very busy second half, a very busy spring schedule. Softball kicks off next Thursday night against Fordham. It's 90s night and spring soccer is also almost here. I mean, the men's team will soon have the opportunity to take on Phoenix Rising at home on February 8th. And we actually caught up with Coach Shellis, who was recently inducted into the U.S. Coaches Hall of Fame. Take a look. Who would ever have thought that Shellis Hyman would be a successful soccer coach? Who would ever have thought that Shellis Hyman would be an inducted into the United Soccer Coaches Hall of Fame? I never did. Not something I ever thought about. And this journey for me has just been a journey of passion. And I've been so very blessed and fortunate to, to find a success and to meet so many good people in my lifetime. Yeah, I was born in uh, Macau, China. And um, my family had lived there for centuries. And uh, it's a Portuguese colony. When we came to the United States, I was in uh, Dayton, Ohio, and I went to high school in Vandalia Butler. My earlier days in Vandalia, uh, when I was in high school, uh, English wasn't my first language, and my coaches there really influenced me, uh, being a, a hard worker, you know, giving my best, and just some of the qualities that I use today as a coach. You know, when I was growing up, um, I lost my father at a young age, so those coaches were great influences on me. The first ones were my high school coaches, 
and I wanted to be just like them. I think that's probably a normal thing for, for people to think. You know, you see the job they were doing, you saw the effect they were having on, on young people, and I, I hope to have done that as well. Yeah, you know, I played professionally in Cincinnati Comets, and then I went to Brazil to, to be more involved in the game of soccer, to coaching courses. I did an, what they call an estagio. An estagio was, uh, they signed me to a professional team, the Sao Paulo Futebol Clube, and I was with them for a year and a half. Came back for vacation. It was really interesting when I came back on vacation, my college coach Fritz Teller said to me, you know, if you'll just stick around, I'm gonna retire in a year and, and you could potentially be the next coach. And we decided to do that. It was probably one of the best decisions I ever made because I started coaching when I was 27 years of age at, uh, at my alma mater. And those were uh, great, great days for me and great start for me in my coaching career. You know, when I think about my, my past, I have to go back to my childhood being raised in Macau, China. And, and, the, and the word that was used was Gai Lo. Gai Lo is a Chinese word meaning that you're a foreigner. So I never really fit in in Macau. Even though it was a Portuguese colony, it was a lot of Chinese. And coming to the United States, not having the language and not really having any direction at all, I was really felt very fortunate to be associated with some good people that gave me some direction. It's humbling. It's humbling because no one, again, no one goes into an association or a coaching background with an idea that I'm gonna be successful. You hope you will be, you can only put in the work and then uh, the end results are the end results. But it's not just the wins and losses, it's, it's what you really feel like you're doing for the game. And I hope I've been a, a, a good role model, and I hope I helped the game of soccer. And once again, a congratulations is in order for Coach Shellis Heidman being inducted into the United Soccer Coaches Hall of Fame just a few months ago, and of course, like I mentioned, Cheyenne, before that video, a very, very busy spring schedule for the Lopes as we take a look at the upcoming schedule brought to you by BSN Sports. Yep. Women's basketball will be back in the arena this weekend for one of the biggest games of the season as they host New Mexico State Saturday at 2 p.m., and then later that night, you can catch men's volleyball as they take on number nine Stanford at 6 p.m., and then next week, is the start of softball season, so don't miss out the Lopes home opener Thursday the 6th at 6 o'clock against Stanford. Things are rocking and rolling here in Phoenix, but right now it's Thursday night. We're live from Phoenix as we get ready for second half action between the Lopes and the Vaqueros. It's UTRGV 32, GCU 26 as you're watching GCU women's basketball right here on GCU TV. Welcome to GCU. You're in Lope country now. What's that sound? We bring the thunder in the heart of Phoenix. All right, uh, time to go. Beam me up, Scotty. I'm getting my master's in education online. I can't slow down time, but I do make my own schedule. Good thing, too, since I'm a mom, wife, student, and teacher. The rest of my time, I make sure this house keeps rolling. Here at the Lopes Lab, when we're not contemplating the paradoxes of time travel. Hey, Mort. Greetings. We're working on technology that will save lives. And robots. We're being hacked! Time to get to work. I'm defending against malware and hacker attacks. We need people who can outsmart the enemy. Oh, I got you now. And? Here at GCU, we teach you to harness your passion, transform it into a career, so you can help change the world. That's good to know. My passion isn't just in the classroom. It's also on the court. Game point. No pressure. Pressure! Let me tell you about pressure. When it's life or death, that's when the pressure is really on. Doctor, he's going into VFIT. Nurse, get the crash cart. Clear! 
It takes grit and determination to lead a Division I team. Push it! Push it! But for some of us, it just comes naturally. Yeah! When it comes to school spirit, we do it best. Hopes up. Hopes up. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Be the thunder. One more member on our roster. Streets of New York is proud to announce Grand Canyon University to our winning team. We are now the official pizza of GCU. Go Lopes. Back inside the GCU arena here in the heart and soul of Phoenix, Arizona. Getting ready for second half action between the Lopes and the Vaqueros as we take a look at the Canyon State halftime stats brought to you by Canyon State. Credit Union, and of course, both teams shooting well offensively, despite UTRGV coming away with that 5% differential, 41% to the Lopes, 36%. Lopes defensively, so what's kept them in this game so far, Cheyenne, only down by six with those nine turnovers compared to the four so far from the Vaqueros. And then of course, from downtown, both teams shooting about even. The Vaqueros, of course, with 33% to the Lopes, 29%. And the Lopes with the rebounds. We mentioned both May Bryan and Deja Daniel in this game defensively with the rebounds. Leading the charge, the Lopes with 21 points total to the 15 rebounds by UTRGV in this game. Yeah, the Lopes actually lead the WAC in rebound defense at a little over 35%. So them having that many rebounds definitely makes sense going off of how they are in the WAC with these rebounds that they all seem to get fairly constantly. And we also mentioned in that first half, the Vaqueros doing a solid job at getting fouled in the paint. They had 16 points in the paint in the first half. That's half their scores so far here tonight with 32 points. 15 points off the bench as well. The Lopes with 12 points off the bench by their own doing. UTRGV taking charge in that second quarter towards the end. It looked like the Lopes were on the verge of breaking away, we mentioned with that 5-0 scoring run halfway through, but the Vaqueros with a 17-11 win in that second quarter after both teams coming away with 15 points respectively in quarter number one. So we'll see who Coach Powell goes with here offensively as the starting five. It looks like it's gonna be Jada Holland, Laura Piera, Carla Balagay, Tavia Rowell, and Deja Daniel, the starting five from the start of the game. And it looks like it's gonna be John A. Templeton, Amara Graham, Ashley Lopez, Haley Jones, and Desiree Berge. As a wide open Tavia Rowell takes a chance to kick off quarter number three, but it's not gonna go for the Lopes, and UTRGV looks to take advantage once again. Haley Jones looking for some separation, finds Templeton. That one's gonna get stripped away by Jada Holland, so the Lopes defense starting off on the right foot here in quarter number three. You mentioned to start off that first quarter, Cheyenne. UTRG playing a zone defense, and I think we could both agree it didn't work at all in those first few moments. Quickly shifting to that man coverage made all the difference in those first two quarters as Jada Holland finds the open man, and Deja Daniel doesn't get the roll, and right there is UTRGV for the rebound. Yeah, both teams actually ended up switching to that man coverage towards the end of the second half, and it seemed to end up working well for both teams. Graham puts it up, and once again, Amara Graham. A little Houdini action once again. We saw the three in the corner off the glass some way, somehow, early on in this game as that one hits off the top of the backboard, almost going out of bounds, and finds the bucket. She now has herself seven points in this game. UTRGV now with an eight-point lead, 34-26. Lopes needing a few big shots in this game right now. Great pass from Daniel, making it look easy. Setting up Carla Balagay, who comes away with two points. 
As you take another look here on the replay, wide open is Carla Balagay down front, going one-on-one -on -one with Haley Jones. Six-point lead now for the Vaqueros, looking again for their first win in their last three games. As the Lopes looking to complete a very dramatic comeback win here tonight before their epic date on Saturday afternoon with the New Mexico State Aggies. Templeton looking for the jump shot. Doesn't find the net, but she gets fouled by Daniel. And she'll shoot two from the line. Templeton with six points in this one. Three for seven from the field. Has herself one rebound in just 12 minutes in this one. Havocs looking to get in the ear of Templeton for these two free throw attempts. First one is good, and UTRGV now has themselves a seven point lead with about eight minutes and 16 seconds remaining here in quarter number three. And she drains both shots as UTRGV regains that eight point lead as the Lopes look into a race, an eight point deficit. It's their largest deficit of the night. Piera. Thought about shooting that one from the arc. Thought better of it. Finds Tavia Rowell in the paint, looking for an open. Piera on the other side, nothing but net. And Laura Piera with her second three-point shot of the night, getting the Lopes right back in this one. It's a five-point deficit. You take another look here at the replay. Solid job offensively from Laura Piera. Thinking better of that first three-point attempt, finding Tavia Rowell, who dishes it right back to Laura Piera after the pass to Jada Holland, UTRGV looking to erase that three point play from Laura Piera right there with Templeton, rebounded by Jones, puts it up the glass, doesn't get the rebound, rebounded by Deja Daniel, and here come the Lopes. So the Lopes, once again on that 5 0 run in the last quarter, like we mentioned, looking for another one right here after that three point conversion from Piera. One on one, Lazane Templeton finds a wide open Rowell. Lopes looking for the downtown distance, finds another one from Tavia Rowell, her first shot of the game, a 6-0 scoring run right off the bat. You take another look right there. Long distance calling for the gray and purple. A quick timeout for Coach Lane Lord. Ren is due right now for the Vaqueros as you're watching GCU Women's Basketball right here on GCU TV. It takes great determination to lead a Division I team. When my hot water heater failed, she was pregnant, in-laws were coming, a little bit of water, it really, it rocked our world. I had no idea the amount of damage that water could do. We called USAA, and they, they greeted me as they always do. Sergeant Baker, how are you? They were on it. It was unbelievable. Having insurance is something everyone needs, but having USAA, that's a privilege. We're the Bakers and we're USAA members for life. USAA. Get your insurance quote today. When it comes to school spirit, we do it best. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up, Lopes up. Lopes up. Lopes up from Afghanistan. Lopes up. 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 Making the call from downtown in those 50 seconds. A three-point conversion from Laura Piera. And then a quick turnaround after the rebound from Deja Daniel. A three-point shot from Tavia Rowell to make this a two-point game. It was once an eight-point lead from UTRGV about a minute and a half ago. Quickly erased as Coach Lane Lord had to call his first time out in quarter number three. Yeah, this offense, once you get this loped offense going, it's hard to stop them. The Volqueros have tried to do that with their man coverage and playing very aggressively on defense. But as we mentioned earlier, all of these Lopes have been stepping up. There's been so many people coming off the bench and helping this Lopes offense. And it's easy to see here tonight that they're still doing that. Still plenty of basketball left to be played as that one stripped by Piera, quickly rebounded there by Megan Johnson, puts up a floater in and out, rebounded by Daniel. And now the Lopes have an opportunity to complete the comeback. All they need is two here. As Laura Piera finds Balagay back to Tavia Rowell. Thought about shooting that one from the arc once again as she's going to get fouled by Tapia. That's her first personal. Yeah. 
Now looks like it's gonna be inbounded by Jada Holland underneath the basket, one-on-one -on -one with Amara Graham. Pierre with that last three-point attempt now has six points on the night. That was Tavia Rowell's first bucket of the evening as Jada Holland back at the top of the key, 10 seconds to shoot, finds a wide open Piera from the distance, doesn't find that one as that one hits off the side of the rim. UTRGV takes it the other way once again. It'll be Amara Graham, we mentioned seven points in 20 minutes played here tonight. Finds an open Megan Johnson, looking to be the hot hand early on here against Balagay. Graham one on one with Piera, finds Tapia. Tapia with about 10 seconds to shoot off the shot clock. And Augustus sinks that one as UTRGV regains at least a four point lead, 38-34, but the Lopes once again making that one very difficult for that UTRGV offense. Jada Holland finds Balagay, wide open Piera, thought about dishing that one from long distance once again, finds Balagay as that pass just a little too high for Carla. As Graham takes it the other way, looking for the layup. Right there is Laura Pierre to swat it away and she'll take it the other way here for the Lopes. So that defense, like we said, Cheyenne had to step up here in quarter number three. It's stepping up right here, right now. Erasing that eight point deficit, cutting it to four. Trying to cut it to at least two right here now. As Tavia Rowell once again with some separation, two on one coverage. Wide open Pierre thought about once again dishing it from beyond the arc, but that's gonna be fouled or at least called against the Lopes as UTRGV will once again take it the other way trying to add to their lead. Tiana Brown once again re-enters this one for the Lopes. Laura Piera really making her presence felt offensively and defensively in these past few moments takes a seat for the moment for Coach Powell as Valeria Tapia making her presence felt in the second quarter with two points on two steals. Dishes that one to Augustus, blocked by Deja Daniel. And once again, the Lopes will look to take advantage of their smart defensive play so far here in quarter number three by cutting the lead to two. Balagay dishes that one to Brown. Kiana Brown still looking for her first point of the night. One on one with Graham. Back to Holland, seven seconds to shoot on the shot clock. To Balagay, one second to shoot. Throwing it up is Jada Holland, not smart play there from the Lopes. Or not a smart play, excuse me, is that one just thrown up there by Jada Holland at the buzzer as it doesn't find the rim and Jada Moss will re-enter this one for the Lopes and the Lopes are gonna take a timeout as they are scoreless in the last two minutes and 48 seconds after the timeout from Coach Lane Lord. So we'll see if the Lopes are able to rebound, regain that momentum as you're watching GCU women's basketball right here on GCU TV. You use the latest technology to treat patients, but your care and compassion is timeless. Advancing your career means helping more patients and providing even more care. Grand Canyon University's online programs in nursing make it convenient for you to become the expert every patient deserves. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. At GCU, earning your MBA degree online comes with the college experience. To advance your career in business, it takes support from those around you. Our online class size averages less than 25 students with highly skilled faculty. GCU's Colangelo College of Business offers online MBA programs in real-world emphasis, including accounting, leadership, marketing, sports business, and more. Find your purpose at GCU. Visit gcu.edu slash MBA. Back here on GCU TV as Coach Powell takes her first timeout of quarter number three, or immediate timeout rather, as it's a 38-34 lead for the Vaqueros over the Grand Canyon University Antelopes. As we saw a tale of two stories so far here in quarter number three, Cheyenne. We saw the Lopes come out of the gate strong with a 6-0 run, eliminating that eight point deficit from the Vaqueros, but in the last three minutes, two minutes and 48 seconds to be exact, They've gone scoreless against this Vaqueros defense. Yeah, the Vaqueros defense has come out again strong as they were to end the first half. And they've been getting those fouls in the paint again, which have been really beneficial for them. And 
the Lopes offense and defense just needs to come up with a way to stop the Vaqueros being so aggressive. And Megan Johnson being aggressive in the paint. She's gonna get fouled underneath by Tiana Brown and she'll shoot two from the line. This is what, this is what made the Vaqueros so successful in that second quarter, getting fouled when they needed to in the paint underneath the basket. Megan Johnson has been the prime example of that so far with five points. She's two for four from the line so far here tonight in just 14 minutes played. Trying to extend that four point lead to at least five. Doesn't sink the first shot. She's now two for five from the line. Yeah, the Havocs are not making it easy for her at that line at all. They seem to be getting louder. And she goes 0 for 2 from the line. Two very important shots missed by UTRGV, but a very monumental save there from Traylin Tyler, giving her team another chance here offensively. She'll take it herself, doesn't get the foul, but it's last touched by Deja Daniel, and UTRGV continues their pursuit to try and dish out at least two points on this drive with about 12 seconds to shoot on the shot clock. Inbounded by Lopez. One-on-one -on -one with Tavia Rowell. Floats that one up after finding space. No good, and it's gonna be rebounded by Jada Holland, and she'll take it the other way for the Lopes. Once again, trying to cut into this lead with about three minutes and 40 seconds left here in the third quarter. One-on-one -on -one with Amara Graham. Jada Moss. Finds Jada Holland. Finding some separation in the paint, slashing and dashing, finds the glass, doesn't find the bucket as it's gonna be rebounded by Graham, finds a wide open Lopez, taking it down the side of the court, one-on-one -on -one with Tavia Rowell. Finds Trey Lynn Tyler, Tyler looking for some space in the paint once again, finds a wide open Lopez. Finds Augustus, Augustus looking to take it herself against Asia Daniel, rebounded by Daniel. After the layup doesn't go in, trying for the quick steal right there was Lopez. Great defensive play there from UTRGV. Catching the Lopes off guard, but the Lopes able to stay in possession. Moss finds an open Tavia Rowell. Here comes Tavia Rowell looking for the foul, swatted away by Augustus. And here comes Traylon Tyler the other way. And she finds Graham at the top of the key. 19 seconds to shoot, UTRGV taking their time on this drive as Tyler, one on one with Moss, is gonna get fouled. Yeah, we talk about how aggressively both teams are playing, but when they need to, and they know that they need to, they slow down that offense to not only give themselves that break that they need to calm down and settle back in, but to also make sure that they understand what they need to do to get that basket. 13 fouls in that second quarter, already six combined fouls here in quarter number three as UTRGV with a huge three-point play there from Berge. She now has herself nine points on the night and it's a seven-point lead now for UTRGV. Brown looking for some separation herself here, finds Jada Moss. Moss back to Holland. Holland with about 15 seconds to shoot, finds a wide open Moss, looking to drive in the paint, puts it up. Making that one look a little too easy as Jada Moss on the board for the first time tonight as you take a look at the replay right there and it's a five point deficit now for the Lopes as the defense once again looking to step up. That one off the foot of Tiana Brown, but ricocheted right back to Johnson. Traylon Tyler puts it up off the glass, no good, rebounded by Deja Daniel, that one gets away from her. Jada Holland grabs it, looking for the breakaway. We'll see if she slows things down here, looks like she will, waiting for her team to catch up with her. Finds Moss, pass inside to Daniel, and the foul is gonna get called against the Lopes there as that one knocks down Berge. And UTRGV will once again take advantage of a defensive mistake here for the Lopes. That'll be the third personal for Deja Daniel as she'll take a seat. Both Deja Daniel and Tiana Brown being subbed out as Laura Piera and Ven Laveris check into this one for Coach Powell. So Amara Graham, we mentioned seven points in 25 minutes in this one, looking to set up UTRGV's offense with the biggest lead of the night, they currently lead by five. Their largest lead has been eight. 
as that one's gonna be no good for Berge. Her first charge of the night is gonna go against Jada Holland. So the point and the basket is no good. And the Lopes once again will trail this one by at least five as they'll take it the other way. So it'll be the second personal against Ashley Lopez as Venla Veris will now shoot two from the line for the Lopes. Trying to chip away at this deficit. Again, a five point deficit with about a minute six remaining here in quarter number three. Ben Lomberis, who mentioned with that three, or that big three point conversion in the second quarter. Knocks down both free throw attempts here to make this a three possession game, a, or a three point game, a one possession game, excuse me, as the Lopes will now look to once again complete this comeback. As Laura Piera inbounds that one to Jada Holland. Piera one on one with Templeton who re-enters this one for the Orange from downtown. Long distance calling. Ben Laveris nods this one up at 41 apiece. So after a huge technical foul by the orange and white, UTRGV paying the price with a huge 7-0 scoring run for GCU in the last minute and 10 seconds. And they'll look to take their fifth lead of the night here on this drive as Laura Piera again, one-on-one -on -one with Templeton, two-on-one -on -one coverage. Moss dishes this one to Jada Holland. Back to Piera, looking to take it herself to the house, making it look easy. And the Lopes regain the lead. They lead 43 to 41. A 9 0 scoring run as you take another look here. Slashing and dashing to the paint. Piera now with eight points in this one, three for six from the field as Templeton puts that one up with one second remaining. And they're going to hit the buzzer beater shot to knob this one up at 40 three apiece, so it's a barn burner, ladies and gentlemen, heading into corner number four. Something's gotta give their six and six lifetime against each other. It's a 43-43 game, and you gotta like what you saw from this Lopes offense here in quarter number three, Cheyenne. Yeah, this Lopes offense had truly come alive within just that last two minutes of gameplay. That technical foul leading into the two free throws, the Lopes getting the ball back, and making some really big plays on offense and some even bigger stops on defense, getting rebounds when it rebounds when it really mattered for that Lopes offense. Well, we mentioned at the start of the broadcast that we saw some familiar faces really contributing on that road trip. We mentioned the Jada Hollins and the May Bryants and the Ven Laverises. Well, tonight it's been about Laura Piera, Ven Laveris, and May Bryant dishing out eight points each, and we'll see what the Lopes are in store for here in quarter number four as you're watching GCU Women's Basketball right here on GCU TV. GCU helps you stay focused on staying purpose-driven. They give you the tools to find what your purpose truly is. Once I got out here, I kind of had an identity crisis. Walking around campus, I saw a flyer for something called Java Jams. When I first walked onto that stage, my heart was pounding, but I was able to find myself as an artist. My name is Joseph, and I'm earning my Bachelor of Arts degree at GCU. There's a thunder in all of us. Come find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Canyon State Credit Union, a local credit union serving the Valley for over 65 years, can assist you in buying your first home, refinancing your current home, or if you're dreaming of a retirement home. Canyon State Credit Union can provide you with a fast and affordable solution that meets your needs. Let Canyon State Credit Union run the numbers on your dream. Visit CanyonStateCU.org or call 623-580-6015 for more information. Canyon State Credit Union, committed to you. We do business in accordance with the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. MLS number 41... Well, I hope you're ready for quarter number four here in Phoenix, because once again, we're coming in hot here with quarter number four action. That one's stripped away by Piera, but a quick foul coming from UTRGV. The Lopes will regain possession as once again, this defense looking to take what they had in quarter number three and bring it in to quarter number four. You mentioned the 9-0 scoring run for the Lopes. A racing, a seven point deficit to give them a 43-41 lead. Ben Laveris nodding up the game with her third three-point shot, or excuse me, her second 
three-point shot of the night. And then, of course, UTRGV with the buzzer beater in the final moments to knot it up at 43 apiece. So see with the Lopes trying to take their sixth lead of the night. There's Jada Moss with the floater, doesn't get the roll, rebounded by Templeton. Templeton slowing things down at the top of the key, one-on-one -on -one with Jada Holland. Templeton with eight points in this game. Looking for Megan Johnson, takes it herself, gets the roll in and out, off the glass and back in. And UTRGV regains their lead. They lead at 45-43. So Laura Piera looking to nod this one back up, taking this one to the top of the key for the gray and white. Back in the paint, throws it up, doesn't get the roll there. Very strong defense from Megan Johnson. As UTRGV once again looking to regain their large lead to start off quarter number four. Templeton one on one with Piera. Finds Haley Jones, Haley Jones with one bucket so far here tonight and she'll make it two and she'll have a chance for a three point play as UTRGV regaining their momentum just like that. Looking to regain that five point advantage. As Tavia Rowell quickly re-enter this one for Coach Powell with Jada, Hall, or excuse me, Jada Moss taking a seat. And it looks like Deja Daniel will re-enter this one for Mae Bryan as well. UTRGV off to the start that they wanted after that nightmarish ending to quarter number three. A 9-0 scoring run from the Lopes. Really finding that call from downtown. Laura Piera and Ben Laveris with two three-point shots each during that run as they now lead by five, 48-43 after that last shot from Johnson. See what Jada Holland and company have in store here in the final eight minutes trying to erase a five point deficit. We've seen the Lopes erase a five point lead and a seven point lead for UTRGV in quarter number three as a great defensive play there from Templeton able to keep that one in play. Traylon Tyler looking to cross the seas there. It's gonna be rebounded by Deja Daniels, stripped by Traylon Tyler once again, rebounded by Tyler, so Traylon Tyler being very aggressive offensively on this drive. Templeton looking to take it herself against Ben Laveris off the glass. And just like that, UTRGV once again leads this one by seven to the Lopes. If they want to come back in this one, are going to have to erase their third seven-point lead of the night. Laura Piera finds Holland. One-on-one -on -one with Tyler. To Tavia Rowell. Back to Piera. Finds Deja Daniel with about... 10 seconds left to shoot on the shot clock. Rowell to Ben Laveris, wide open. Holland from the distance, not gonna go. Just a little too much oomph on that one from the Lopes freshman. And it looks like Graham's gonna take it the other way. Looking for the pick from Augustus. Not gonna find any breathing room right there against Piera. Traylon Tyler, 10 seconds left to shoot. Lopes defense has them locked down for the moment as that one's gonna be blocked by Deja Daniel, but it's gonna go out of play. And UTRGV will have another shot with about two seconds left on the shot clock. So they're gonna have to make something happen pretty quickly here as you take another look there on the replay. Great defensive stuff there from Deja Daniel. Yeah, they're gonna have to be really cautious of that shot clock, only having two seconds left. And they're going underneath the Tyler and it's gonna be stripped by Laura Pierre, so they're not gonna be able to get a shot off as Tavia Rowell takes it the other way after the pass from Piera. Wide open, Laura Piera thought about going for three. She hands it off to Holland instead. Boom, 50 to 46 lead now for UTRGV as Jada Holland, as you take another look here on the replay, another wide open play, redeems herself after that last three point attempt moments ago, where again, she put a little too much on it, not finding the net, finds it there, no problem. And the Lopes once again trail by four. That one's not gonna go for Augustus, rebounded by Daniel. To Ven Laveris, back to Daniel, back to Piera. Full court press coming from the Vaqueros as they do not want to erase another seven point lead late in this game. Jada Holland, now with five points in this game after that three point conversion moments ago. Tavia Rowell puts it up. Rebounded by Deja Daniel. Back to Piera with about 15 seconds left to shoot on the shot clock. So the Lopes being very cautious late in this game. Again, about six minutes remaining in this game. Tavia Rowell crossing up 
Augustus and hits the two-point conversion, but it doesn't appear that it's going to count as the foul is going to be called against Tavia Rowell, but that one looking pretty nice at the hands of Tavia Rowell, really crossing up Augustus there as you heard it from the Havocs. So it's a four-point lead. It's going to be a four-point lead that's going to stay intact for UTRGV after that last play. It'll be Valeria Tapia dishing that one to Megan Johnson. Johnson's been a vital part of this offense so far here tonight with her five points. One-on-one -on -one with Jada Holland, puts it up against the glass, gets fouled, and she'll go back to the line where she's been pretty comfortable so far here tonight in GCU Arena. Yeah, the story of the night has really been the Vaqueros getting fouled in the paint and getting to shoot those free throws. And it's still working for them, and clearly as they keep going for it, the Lopes seem to be a little more careful with those fouls in the paint. And we'll see if Megan Johnson, who missed her last two three free throw attempts. Of course, the Havocs going to try and play a factor here as that sixth man here on the court. It's not going to benefit them there. She sinks the first shot to make this a five-point deficit for GCU once again. It's been a valiant effort from this Lopes offense here tonight against UTRGV, staying in this one, erasing not one but two seven-point deficits. As it looks like we'll see two substitutions for Coach Lane Lord with about five and a half minutes remaining with his team up by six. And we've seen how quickly these leads have evaporated for the orange and white here tonight. As Laura Piero once again looking to lead the Lopes to another tie here late in quarter number four. Jada Holland in the corner, dishes it back to Rowell from downtown, sinks it, nothing but net. Tavia Rowell with the long distance calling as the Lopes Really making the call here from downtown late in this game, erasing that six point deficit. Now a one possession game once again, 52 to 49. And all it takes is one more defensive stop here and one more shot from the distance to nod this game up at 52 apiece. We'll see if the Lopes defense is able to combat this Vaqueros offense as it looks like it's gonna be Amara Graham dishing that one to Tapia. Tapia in the paint, looking for Bershers. Stripped by Laura Piera, finds Rowell, Rowell. Thought about taking that one from the distance. Dishes that one back to Deja Daniel, who feeds that one off the glass, and it's a one possession game for UTRGV. I just mentioned moments ago, Cheyenne, that lead could evaporate quickly, and just like that, with a snap of the fingers, it's a one point game. Yeah, all of the Lopes lead, trying to come back to gain that lead, have all started with three point shots, all from deep coming from the Lopes. And another shot from the distance, that one coming from Grand Rio Valley, not gonna go, rebounded by Berge. And that one's gonna be fouled against the Lopes. And it's gonna go against Tavia Rowell. And it looks like we're gonna see a timeout from Coach Powell. And it's a, again, a one possession game, 52 to 51 as UTRGV, again, looking to get on a hot streak here with about four minutes remaining, trying to upset the Lopes here on the road. Get the best gear to show off your Lope pride. Go to lopeshop.gcu.edu to find everything GCU, from the newest apparel to the coolest accessories. Use promo code GCUTV25 to get 25% off for being a GCU TV viewer. Let's paint the valley purple and go Lopes. Again, that promo code is GCUTV25, all caps for 25% off. Your next order at the Lopes shop. It's t-shirt time here in Phoenix. As we have our third and final media timeout here inside the GCU Arena. Of course, the Lopes looking to erase that seven-point deficit that they had moments ago. We've mentioned the fouls in this game, only five combined fouls so far here in the first six minutes of quarter number four between the Vaqueros and the Lopes. It's been all about Zane Templeton, 12 points, five from 11 from the field in 20 minutes of work. Only two rebounds from Templeton in this game. Amara Graham, we mentioned some lucky shots that she's put up off the glass here tonight. 
seven points, three for nine from the field. And again, for the Lopes in this quarter, it's been Jada Holland with those five points here late. And four rebounds to go along with those five points. Laura Piero, we mentioned that 10 point outing against Utah Valley, has herself eight points here tonight. In 24 minutes, Tavia Rowell, the hot hand for the Lopes at the moment with that last free throw, or excuse me, that last three point attempt from the arc. Making this a three point game at the time and Deja Daniel putting up her ninth point of the night, making this a one point game as UTRGV looks to inbound this one. Tapia underneath the basket. About 20 seconds to shoot on the shot clock. And it's gonna be a five second violation from UTRGV, unable to inbound that one as the Lopes defense stepping up, giving Valeria Tapia not enough time to find the open man as Laura Piero will once again direct traffic here for this Lopes offense, trying to take their seventh lead change tonight and their second in this quarter. Again, three minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Piero with eight points on the night, dishes that one to Ven Laveris. You really can't go wrong with any of the five women on the court right now for the Lopes. They opt to go with Laura Piera, making that one look very easy as you take another look here on the replay. Outworking Valeria Tapia there to give the Lopes a 53-52 lead. Almost evaporated there off the shot from Berge, rebounded by Deja Daniel. And once again, Laura Piera will once again re-strategize here for the Lopes, trying to take a two possession lead. A 7-0 run here for the Lopes in the last two minutes. Wide open, Jada Holland, not gonna go. Again, just a little too much there from Jada Holland as she hits the back end of the rim. And UTRGV has another chance to regain the lead with Tapia. Tapia with only two points on the night in 17 minutes. Templeton finds Graham at the top of the key, 15 seconds to shoot. Megan Johnson dishes that one back to Tapia. In the paint is Berge. Berge one-on-one -on -one with Daniels. Not gonna get the roll. Rebounded by Ven Laveris. And the Lopes have another opportunity here to add to this lead. Two and a half minutes remaining. Two minutes and 34 seconds to be exact. As Holland dishes that one to Laveris. Back to Piera. One-on-one -on -one with Templeton. Looking for some space. Finds a wide open Ven Laveris, but the pass just a little too wild from the Lopes sophomore. Looked like it was gonna be a wide open attempt from long distance from Ven Laveris. Could have possibly given the Lopes a four point lead, but the pass just a little bit off target. Goes out of bounds and UTRGV with another opportunity to regain the lead. Graham dishes that one back to Tyler. Traylon Tyler's been detrimental so far here for UTRGV. Templeton. With the floater, not gonna go. Rebounded by Rowell. Holland's gonna take it the other way. We've met, reached the two minute mark here in Phoenix to one point game in favor of GCU. Piero looking for Ven Laveris, a little bit of a cross up there. Finds Holland instead. Holland gonna take it herself. Finds a wide open Tavia Rowell. Not gonna go from long distance. And here come the Vaqueros once again looking for the breakaway play, Traylon Tyler. And it'll be swatted away there from Ven Laveris. I mentioned moments ago, Trayland Tyler being detrimental to this Lopes defense as opposed to the Vaqueros offense. As it looks like Coach Lane Lord wants to talk things over with his squad once more. It's a 53-52 lead for the Lopes. A minute and a half remaining. Don't go anywhere. You're watching GCU Women's Basketball right here on GCU TV. You have a foundation of strong values. You belong where your passions come to life. Grand Canyon University's online degree program in cybersecurity makes it convenient for you to join the newest front in keeping your community safe. GCU teaches you how to secure and protect Back inside the GCU Arena. Lopes looking to hang on here tonight in a big win, trying to get to 10 wins on the season. And two games over 500 overall against UTRGV. UTRGV 
looking for the big upset win at home as the Slopes defense once again trying to play tight coverage against the Vaqueros. A big bucket there from Augusta. She's on the board for the first time tonight, and it's the biggest bucket of the night so far for UTRGV as they take a 54-53 lead with a minute and 20 seconds remaining. Holland redirecting traffic once again for the Lopes, one-on-one -on -one with Tyler. Wide open, Ven Laveris not gonna go, and it goes out of play. And the Vaqueros have an opportunity here to go up by at least two possessions with about a minute and 10 seconds remaining. And Coach Powell wants to talk things over with her starting five once again. Again, six and six lifetime are the Vaqueros and the Lopes against each other. Something's got to give in this game. Lopes down by one. You're watching GCU Women's Basketball right here on GCU TV. Curiosity fuels you. So when you're ready for a fulfilling new career, let your curiosity fuel that change. Grand Canyon University's online degree programs in technology make it convenient for you to achieve your dream. GCU teaches you how to plan for innovation. By applying that knowledge to today's most challenging problems, you're helping to build a better tomorrow. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. Performance. Back here inside the GC Arena, and I gotta say, Cheyenne, it's been the tale of two stories here tonight. We've seen the Lopes complete three seven-point deficit comebacks in this one, but after that, they've gone on a bit of a scoring drought. We've seen them go on a three-minute scoring drought, a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought, and currently, a two minute and 40 second scoring drought with about a minute remaining down by one in this game against the Vaqueros looking for a big win on the road. Yeah, the Lopes defense has been great, but now their offense needs to do a little bit of work with about 45 seconds left in the quarter down by one. And there's gonna be another timeout by the Lopes. And of course, Coach Powell just wants to make sure everybody's on the same page in the remaining 45 seconds in this game after that big missed opportunity from Megan Johnson. So we'll see if the Lopes are able to complete the comeback here in Phoenix going into their big date on Saturday against the Aggies. You're watching GCU Women's Basketball right here on GCU TV. Performance is your profession. You excel in bringing the best out of people and teams to discover their true potential, but you strive to take the next step in your career. GCU's PhD in Performance Psychology online degree program gives you the tools you need to elevate your performance to the next level and do it all within your tight schedule. When human excellence meets cutting edge technology, business advances. Find your purpose at GCU, where advanced technologies drive education. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash online. It has been two minutes and 56 seconds since the, La the Lopes last scored. As they look to regain the lead for the eighth time tonight, for the third time in this quarter with about 45 seconds remaining. They're down 54 to 53 as Piera inbounds it to Jada Holland. 40 seconds remaining. Holland wide open at the top of the key. Looks for Ben Laveris. Thought about dishing that one from the arc. Right there is Templeton. And right there is Tavia Rowell taking a chance. Not connecting as UTRGV now has an opportunity to put this one in the bag as Piero with the quick foul on Traylon Tyler. And Tyler is gonna go to the line with about 24.9 seconds remaining. A huge chance taken there from Tavia Rowell does not execute as the Lopes will now Sub in May Bryant for Laura Piero is gonna take a seat here in the final moments of this one. As Traylon Tyler looking to add to her total, eight points on the night, four for eight from, de from uh, the line here tonight, now four from nine. A huge missed opportunity there for Traylon Tyler late in this game with her team, only up by one. Now if she sinks this one, they're up by two and the Lopes have an opportunity to knot it up with about 24 seconds remaining. And Coach Powell is gonna take her third timeout in the last minute with her team down by two. And Cheyenne, something's gotta give here late in this game. We mentioned moments ago, the Lopes have not been able to capitalize on their big scoring runs. We've seen three eight-point deficits erased by the Lopes in this second half against the Vaqueros, which have all been followed by massive scoring droughts. This one currently at three minutes and 16 seconds. Yeah, the Lopes defense has been great to keep that scoring deficit slight as it is, only down by two. But that offense, as you mentioned,
not being able to score in almost three and a half minutes. The Lopes really need possible great to get a three to take the one point lead in this game, but at least to tie up this game as it currently stands, just get the one basket and then work from there. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Coach Powell draws this one up with about 25 seconds remaining. Lopes obviously the safe bet here with the try for at least two to nod this game up at 55 apiece. Though I wouldn't be surprised to see them try and take the final shot here and go for the win with the three point conversion. We've seen Laura Piera, Jada Holland, Ben Laveris, Tavio Rowell all be successful tonight from beyond the arc. So it shall be interesting. We're gonna find out about five seconds here to see what they're gonna do here as Laura Piera is gonna inbound this one on the low side. Finds Holland. One on one with Graham, gonna take it to the house and knot it up at 55 apiece with 19 seconds remaining. Jada Holland taking it to the house as he take another look there on the replay, making it look very easy against Graham. And Holland now has herself seven points on the night. Another timeout, this one called by Coach Lord. 19 seconds remaining. We're all knotted up at 55. And although the Lopes tied the game there at 55, Cheyenne, you gotta think 19 seconds remaining for UTRGV. They could take the last shot here. That's still a lot of time left in this game with how quickly we've seen the lead change. So I'm sure Coach Lane is currently working on drawing up a play as well as Coach Powell just did to give that Lopes the tying basket. So it'll be really interesting to see how Coach Lane has his team coming out of this timeout. Remember, UTRGV coming up off a devastating loss to New Mexico State, 76-75, just a few nights ago. Looking to come away with a big win on the road here to make up for that loss. Yeah, you have to think that loss is definitely being a chip on their shoulder, as well as the six and six record that the two teams currently have in all-time meetings. So it'll be real interesting to see how this game ends out in the final eight seconds. With seven seconds remaining, UTRGV obviously taking the final shot here. It looks like Tyler's gonna take it. It's stuffed by Deja Daniel and we're headed to overtime. I hope you like free basketball because you're gonna get it here in the heart and soul of Phoenix, Arizona. We're knotted up at 55 apiece. A thrilling fourth quarter offensively for both the Lopes and UTRGV as the Vaqueros will not be going away with the win here just yet for the moment as the Lopes looking to once again re-strategize here in an extra quarter number five here in the first overtime as they look to come away with a thrilling win like I mentioned before their big date on Saturday with New Mexico State. Yeah, yeah as you mentioned Jack, you know, going into overtime this definitely has to bring up feelings from the last game that UTRGV played as we mentioned previously, losing in heartbreaking fashion to New Mexico State by one in overtime. They're definitely going to have that on their mind even more now going into overtime against the Slopes team. And I wonder what's going through the mind of Coach Lane Lord there deciding to take the final shot with about 19.1 seconds remaining on the game clock in quarter number four. Opted to waste the clock, take the final shot as opposed to really putting an aggressive stop there against that Lopes defense, just trying to take the lead. Didn't want any time remaining on the clock for that Lopes offense in those final moments. And considering how well they played in that fourth quarter, can't blame Coach Lane as well, as it looks like the Lopes are gonna go with Ben Laveris, Tavia Raul, Deja Daniel, Jada Holland, and Laura Piera to start off our first overtime period. Free basketball here in Phoenix, Arizona as Deja Daniel will square off against Trey Lynn Tyler here for the tip-off, second tip-off of the night. Havocs are ready for overtime. I asked you before, Cheyenne, are you ready for overtime? I'm ready for overtime, Jack, are you? Let's do it here in Phoenix. That one's gonna be quickly stripped away from Ven Laveris by Augustus. And right off the bat here, UTRGV looks to take control. Templeton finds Tyler. Tyler one-on-one -on -one with Piera. That one's gonna be stuffed by Laura Piera. Laura Piera really coming out of the gate strong defensively here in these final moments as Jada Holland 
finds Pierre. That one's gonna be off target, but Piera rebounds as she keeps that one in play. Finds Daniel back to Piera. Piera finding Holland, gonna be stripped by Tyler, but the foul is gonna be called against Tyler. It's gonna be on, on Tyler against Jada Holland. So the Lopes will once again have a full 20 seconds on the shot clock. Laura Piera will inbound it. Now, if there was one word you could use to describe the regulation game period, I think it would definitely be aggressive. And going into overtime, I feel like it's gonna get even more aggressive here, Jack. Jada Holland looking to be aggressive on this drive right here, right now. Ven Laveris one-on-one -on -one with Templeton, looking for the inside pass on Deja Daniel. Another turnover for UTRGV's defense, as that one's gonna get blocked by Ven Laveris. Coming in hot is Jada Holland, and coming in hot is Augustus. Oh my goodness. A huge stuff in the paint against Jada Holland for Jordan Augustus. We mentioned Augustus, just two points on the night, two big points coming to give UTRGV a 54-53 lead in the fourth quarter, a massive defensive stop there. Lopes regain possession, however, as Jada Holland finds Piera at the top of the key. Piera gonna take it herself off the glass, doesn't find it. But it's gonna be a foul against Traylon Tyler once again, her second personal in overtime. And it looks like Laura Pierre is gonna shoot two from the line, looking to give the Lopes the lead with about three minutes and 48 seconds remaining. That one not gonna go for Pierre. You mentioned how dominant Laura Pierre was in that fourth quarter, mostly defensively. She does have 10 points on the night, matching her total against Utah Valley as she shatters that total with 11. As we'll see May Bryant enter this one for Tavia Rowell in the latter stages of this extra quarter. Yeah, that free throw was the first point that we had here in overtime. Both teams playing absolutely amazingly defensively on this court in overtime. UTRGV looking to match that point from Piera. Tyler off the glass, won't go. Last touched by Daniel, looking for the rebound. Deja Daniel with 14 total rebounds on the night for Coach Powell. Coming off that 12 rebound performance against the Wolverines. Inbounded to Augustus, Augustus. Looking to match up offensively there with Deja Daniel. Six seconds to shoot for the Vaqueros, puts it up, no good. Tyler is gonna let that one roll out of play, but it was last touched by the orange and white. And the Lopes have an opportunity to take a two possession lead. They lead it by 156-55. Talking about that aggressive nature being back, the Vaqueros had that full court press going on for the inbound and are again still playing that man-on-man -man coverage. Bryant back to Piera. Looking to take her time here with the Lopes leading by one. Finds Jada Holland. Tough coverage coming two on one here defensively from UTRGV. Holland with about seven seconds to shoot, finds Daniel stripped away once again by UTRGV as that defense continues to step up. Quickly stripped by Laura Pierre, taken in the other way. Finds Jada Holland in the paint, fouled, won't find the three point play. As that one won't find the basket, but she'll shoot two from the line as the Lopes once again taking a page out of Coach Lane Lord's playbook here, getting fouled in the paint late, and it's just the time that they want to do it with about two minutes and 45 seconds remaining. Jada Holland will shoot two from the line, looking to add to her total. As she finds the glass for the first shot to take, make this a two-point game for the Lopes, two-point lead, 57 to 55. Looking for her ninth point total right here, right now, and she's gonna find it, nothing but net, and the Lopes have themselves a three-point cushion, 58-55 as the Vaqueros who have been, played very strongly offensively here tonight in the paint, have not been as successful from beyond the arc, and with about two and a half minutes remaining, we may have to see them, or at least see them pull something from long distance in this one as Amara Graham had other plans. Goes in strong in the paint, making this a one possession game once again, 58-57. Yeah. See what... Laura Piera's strategy is here at the top of the key. Looking yep. for an open Ben Laveris. 
Thought about taking it from downtown, thought better of it. Jada Holland in the corner, finds Deja Daniel at the top of the key. About 10 seconds left to shoot here on the shot clock for Laura Piera, taking it, floats it. Nothing but net, Laura Piera really heating up with about two minutes left. Makes this a 60 to 57 game. As we've seen, these lead changes can go and come very quickly between these two teams. And a key defensive foul there from Laura Piera. That's gonna be her fifth personal foul of the night, which means she's gonna have to take a seat. We'll see who Coach Powell goes with. It looks like it's gonna be Tavia Rowell, and that's gonna be the end of the night for Laura Piera. So a very dominant fourth quarter and overtime period for Laura Piera. She's gonna finish with 13 points, six assists, and three rebounds. Not to mention the tremendous defensive play in this one from Laura Piera. First free throw attempt is missed by Traylin Tyler. Yeah, the Havocs are definitely letting Tyler have it right now. There's Tyler. Goes one for two from the line, making this a two-point game with a minute and 58 seconds remaining. Megan Johnson re-enters this one for Coach Lane Lord. Jada Holland once again up by two. Wouldn't be shocked to see the Lopes try and isolate the clock here in these final moments. Jada Holland one-on-one -on -one with Templeton. Tavia Rowell, we've seen her take some shots from downtown. Holland looking for some separation here against Berge. Six seconds to shoot, Rowell may have to take a shot here. Two on one coverage, puts it up, is blocked by both Berge and Haley Jones and that one's gonna go in the direction of UTRGV after the Lopes unable to make the shot for a shot clock violation. And UTRGV is gonna take all the time in the world here down by two, a minute and 25 seconds remaining. Jones dishes that one to Johnson. Johnson looking to nod this one up at 60 and she will against May Bryant. And with about a minute 10 remaining, we're all knotted up at 60. Something's gotta give here. Neck and neck are the Lopes and the Vaqueros. Here on this Thursday night in Phoenix, Arizona, Ben Laveris from the York. Not gonna go as it goes out of bounds. He thought it may have come back down and find the net. But to no avail as the Vaqueros are gonna take one more timeout, at least one more timeout in this overtime period. Again, 54 and a half seconds remaining, 60 to 60. And of course, the Lopes losing Laura Piera in this overtime period after fouling out with her fifth personal after that foul against Traylin Tyler. Tyler shooting one for two from the line after that. But that's a big loss for the Lopes in this game considering the way she's been playing as of late. Yeah, Piera defensively and offensively has been absolutely outstanding for the Lopes. She started some of those runs with some amazing shots from down deep. And then defensively just being really aggressive, going after those rebounds. And it's a big loss for the Lopes to lose her. I mean, as you mentioned, Jack, we have 54 and a half seconds and every second is gonna count because as we've seen, those lead changes do come very quickly here between these two teams. We mentioned that. Big time performance from Laura Piera in the fourth quarter as well as the overtime period, finishing with 13 points. We saw May Bryant get off to a hot start with eight points to go along with six rebounds in the first quarter and a half. We have not seen too much action offensively for May Bryant since. We'll see if she gets an opportunity here with about, once again, 45 and a half seconds remaining. It'll be interesting to see what the strategy is here for, from both Coach Powell and Coach Lord. Both coaches are gonna use every second of this timeout that they can to talk to their team to make sure that they know exactly what they need to do in these last 54 and a half seconds. We'll see who Coach Powell goes with. It looks like Deja Daniel, Jada Holland, Tavia Ryan. 
get an opportunity to send this arena into a frenzy if the Lopes are able to come away with the victory. What momentum this game will have if they do pick up a victory heading into Saturday's game against New Mexico State. New Mexico State, of course, 7-12 and 12 overall, 4-2 and two in WAC play so far this year. Matching up pretty evenly against the Lopes defense and offense so far in the 2019 and 2020 season. About 30 seconds to go. Seven seconds to shoot for the Vaqueros. Graham throws it up, doesn't get the bounce, rebounded. And a fresh shot clock for UTRGV with about 18 seconds left, 15 seconds to shoot, and they're gonna waste every second that they possibly can here. Amara Graham with nine points on the night, and there's gonna be a timeout called by the Vaqueros. Again, seven seconds left on the shot clock, 11.4 seconds remaining in this game. And again, if UTRGV is able to get a shot off in these final seven seconds of the shot clock, the Lopes will have about four seconds remaining to try and counter. Yeah, Jack, you know, it's actually really interesting that they're wasting as much time as they are. I understand them want, not wanting to let the Lopes have a chance to shot, but with the way that regulation ended, them having 19 seconds and wasting that time as much as they could until they could make that shot and ended up missing it, it kind of seems as if it's going to go back to that same style right here with 11.4 seconds left in the fifth quarter. Well, it appears that Coach Lane Lord is going to trust his gut. Like you mentioned, what we saw in quarter number four going down to the wire with this last shot. And we saw Graham take that final shot. It was unsuccessful, sending this game to its first overtime period. We'll see who's gonna get the opportunity to send UTRGV home with a potential win this time around as this Lopes defense looks to put a stop to it again. UTRGV is unsuccessful with about four seconds remaining in this game. The Lopes are gonna have to have a quick turnaround with four ticks left on the clock trying to come away with the final buzzer beater shot. So Graham is gonna inbound this one to Berge, finds Johnson with Seven seconds remaining, Berge puts it up and gets fouled with about 5.4 seconds remaining. Two seconds left on the shot clock. And UTRGV with a golden opportunity to try to put this one to rest in overtime. So Desiree Berge with eight points on the night, three from eight from the field, has herself 10 rebounds. Huge foul here. Misses the first attempt. So UTRGV has not been as successful from the line as the Lopes have been tonight and has really shot them in the foot. No bigger than that last attempt right there. And 5.4 seconds remaining, Berge misses both shots. Rebounded by Johnson. And she's gonna get called for the travel and the Lopes are gonna regain possession with 4.6 seconds remaining. And you gotta think, Coach Powell's gonna wanna talk things over, get on the same page with their starting five as her team has an opportunity to once again send GCU Arena into a frenzy. I don't think that anyone could have drawn that up as it's gone so far. 4.6 seconds left. Coach Powell's definitely making sure that her team is on the same page. With that travel being called, that's a huge call for the Lopes, giving them 4.6 seconds left in the fifth quarter. There, Coach Powell has to have a play for this, and it'll be really interesting to see what happens in these final seconds of the fifth quarter. Well, May Bryant has herself eight points. Jada Holland has herself nine. Tavia Rowell with six. Ben Laveris with eight. Deja Daniel with nine. It'll be interesting to see who has the ball in their hands on the final buzzer. And if you go back to, again, December 19th against UC Santa Barbara, Deja Daniel had the ball in her hands in the final moments, coming away with the buzzer beater shot. With that final tick, it'll be interesting to see if she gets a second opportunity here for a little deja vu. 4.6 seconds remaining. It looks like it's gonna be Jada Moss inbounding things for the Lopes. And if that were the case to give the ball back to Deja Daniels, that would also give her her 11th, or sorry, excuse me, her 10th double-double of the season. Moss inbounds it to May Bryant. Bryant to the house, in and out, but she's gonna get fouled. 
and she'll shoot two from the line. So May Bryant with an opportunity to give the Lopes a win here with about one second remaining and she'll shoot two from the line. And we're gonna see one more timeout here in overtime. Man, oh man, a huge play there for May Bryant looking to take this one home from the Lopes. Gets fouled by Templeton. And we saw a moment ago with about five and a half seconds remaining. Desiree Berge unable to hit either one of her two free throw attempts, but now May Bryant with an opportunity. Yeah, with Bryant having this opportunity potentially to give the Lopes up to a two point lead and then only giving the Volqueros one second left on the clock. I think this arena is ready to go into a frenzy. The Havocs are ready and it'll be a really great way to send these Lopes into their game on Saturday against New Mexico State. And we mentioned at the beginning of this overtime period, May Bryant has not shot a bucket since quarter number two. She's got eight points, six rebounds, three turnovers as well in 20 minutes. In this seesaw affair against the UT RGV Vaqueros. And with about one second remaining, she's gonna get an opportunity to put her team up by at least one. Again, both coaches taking every second that they can of this timeout to make sure their teams know exactly what to do. Best case scenario for the Lopes, they get up by two, by both of these free throws going in. Best case scenario for the Vicaros, neither of them go in and they have 1.3 seconds now as they just added to the clock left to score a basket in this fifth quarter. So it's all up to May Bryan now. She talked things over with Jada Holland. As everyone will line up. And this arena is about to get very silent for May Bryan. Lopes lead by one. So 1 1.3 seconds remaining. This 0.3 seconds were put back on the shot clock. May Bryant sinks both and the Lopes lead by two, 62 to 60. This defense looking to put it in the bag. Johnson from half court, no good. Signed, sealed and delivered. The Lopes with a huge win capped off by May Bryant's two free throw attempts to send the Havocs and GC Arena into a frenzy. So at the end of the day, we saw great offense, great defense from both sides. The Lopes are racing three eight-point deficits in this game, and they complete the comeback, all thanks in the final moments from May Bryant. Yeah, that was, you couldn't have drawn that up any better. Well, the basket didn't originally go in. Brian getting those two free throws at the end to put her team up. Again, this has to be a heartbreaking loss for the Vaqueros as they lost their last game to New Mexico State in overtime by one. But a great victory for the Lopes, sending them off to play New Mexico State on Saturday. And of course, you can't forget about the defensive play in the final moments from Laura Piera before getting fouled out. 13 points as well as six steals on her end defensively. And of course, in the final moments, May Bryant sending the Lopes home happy with a big W. And like you mentioned, Cheyenne setting up a very highly anticipated date with New Mexico State on Saturday as they look for their 11th win overall this season. The final score, the Lopes 62, the Vaqueros 60 here in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. Thanks for tuning in. And like we said, they'll be back Saturday at 2 p.m. to take on New Mexico State. Catch it all here on GCU TV. And don't forget to follow Grand Canyon University on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GCU. From everybody here at GCU TV, alongside Cheyenne Rose, I'm Jack O'Hara saying sayonara from GCU Arena here in Phoenix, Arizona. May Bryant, the hero tonight for GCU. Have a great rest of your Thursday. And as always, go Lopes.